person that I would want to fight the most in bare knuckle fighting championship would be maybe like Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz. Um, you know that you know Perry's my boy, but I you know Austin was my boy too. In the sport, in the in combat sports, you got to fight your boys. I've been fighting my homies since Kenny Florian. Kenny Florian was my boy. Josh Rafferty on the Ultimate Fighter was my boy. I've been I, I've been fighting friends since since forever. And it's a part. Ricardo Lamas was my boy. So I fought so many guys that are just homies because, you know, we all are doing this because this is what we do. We're, we're warriors. We're fighters. You know, we 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 enter, we're entertainers. We're gladiators, man. We're gladiators, and and we do this for the fans. We do this for the glory. We do this to live a, an epic life. Like it is an epic life, man. You look at, at bare knuckle fighting championship. Man, it is the biggest challenge to take off those gloves because you know you're you're gonna sacrifice um, being you know you're gonna have a scar. You're gonna have a scar, and scars are you know they are what they are. But when you're a lion like me, man, you don't care about those scars. And plus, you everybody's seen how many scars I earned in the UFC, and hey, they healed. And um, I'm still pretty. At the end of the day, hey man, I gave it my best, man. I trained my ass off, man. I worked hard. I got in there. And I'll tell you, at the end of the fight, going into that fifth round would have been a different story because Austin coming from sea level, Houston, Texas, down to up, up to Albuquerque where it's 5,000 feet, you know, um, that jab started to slow down and he was throwing a lot of punches and I was taking a lot too but he was throwing a lot of punches but I was still in the fight and um, when it's bare knuckle one punch could end the fight you look at all the other fights man their first round KOs every single fight on the card was a first round KO so that goes to show you I went in there with the best the fastest jab in all of BKFC and he didn't only have a fast jab. The guy was elusive. Jesus, she wants to be champion. You know, no hesitation in the post-fight interview either. Like, I want the winner of Valentina Shevchenko and Alexa Grasso. And I agree with her. Like, you go out and do this against this opposition. Like, there's no next title eliminator. For me, it's a championship fight for Aaron Blanchfield next. Uh, what are your thoughts on all that? I'll say this. I, I, I always try to take more of a conservative approach. If I was managing her or coaching her, I, I like kind of a, a more of a slow progression just because um, I want to give her the best opportunity to not only get the belt, 
but to hold on to that damn thing. Uh, and, you know, I think having that experience and seeing a variety of styles and being in some big spots is what's going to allow her to physically, technically, spiritually be able to get that belt when that opportunity arises. So, yeah, the, the big problem is, is that there's not a whole lot of opportunities for other fighters yeah i think you know shevchenko could have other opportunities maybe there's a couple other people that could step in and and be that challenge but blanchfield uh having that amazing performance she might for better or worse get that next opportunity um you know i think here's the problem is showing those kind of vulnerabilities and seeing what shevchenko can do to pick apart fighters on the feet like she does um I'd be a little bit worried for Blanchfield. I think Blanchfield will be just fine if she's able to hit that takedown against Shevchenko. I think she's going to be better on the ground, no question about it. But on the feet, I would like to see more development, um, especially defensively from Blanchfield, before she takes on someone like Shevchenko. She's not just fighting for the belt against anybody. She's going against one of the best females to ever do it. So, uh, again, for me, I would like to see a more of a slow roll, slow progression towards someone like a Shevchenko. When you get ready for a fight with Conor McGregor, how is that different from other fights? It's so much. It's so much different than people think it is, and it's. And I think it's so much different than most of us think it's going to be until we actually get in it. Mm. The lead up, the build up, the the pressures of it, the obligations, the extra work. He's a combat sports icon, and and he should be because of what he has accomplished thus far in the sport. He is a larger than life figure, that, and a lot of men crumble underneath the pressures that is fighting. Conor McGregor. Uh, but there's nothing more dangerous and nothing more intimidating than a man who is wholeheartedly and fully uh, content with himself. And I think that's who I am. So that's who I'm going to show stepping into the Ultimate Fighter, the, the competition of the Ultimate Fighter, as well as stepping in the octagon later this year. Should we do it again? Yeah, of course. Maybe Abu Dhabi. Yes. We deserve a one in Abu Dhabi. It's my, my turn to get booed. <laughs> Make a rematch happen? Right, ready? Yes, why not? Okay. Abu, Dhabi. Abu, Dhabi. Abu, Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. This time Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Yes, that's fair. Three, two, that's fair. one. Should we do it again? Yeah, of course. Good. Maybe Abu Dhabi. Yes. We deserve a one in Abu Dhabi. Uh, my turn to get booed. <laughs> <laughs>